I'm Judy Shaw for NYC Floor Talk. Joining me today is Daniela Izquierdo. She is CEO and co-founder at Foodology. Daniela, it's wonderful to have you on. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks, Judy. It's wonderful to be here. Very excited to share a little bit about Foodology with you. Great. So why don't we start off by talking about the company? Tell me about Foodology and what inspired you to start the company? So at Foodology, we're on a mission to change our customers' day one meal at a time. And basically what that means is that we know that food is among the very few things that can actually change how someone feels within their day. The other two are, I would say, exercise and music, you know, things that have like an immediate impact on your like emotional state um, during your day. Um, And food is one of them. And that's what it's always been for me, at least. It's been um, a space in where, where I enjoy, where I share with family and friends, where I delight myself, where I relax. Uh, during that meal. So at Foodology, what we wanted to do is bring the Latin America consumers amazing food via delivery with very innovative concepts at a very high quality. And that's a little on how we started Foodology. I kind of had always dreamt of having uh, a food business uh, and was just looking for the right opportunity and business model. Take me through your journey of Foodology and tell me what were some of your early hurdles and what are some of your milestones? So basically when we, my co-founder and me, decided to start Foodology, eh, we had this idea, right, for a concept where we could basically remove all the things that we didn't like about the traditional restaurant industry. And the main ones were, we didn't like that it was very high capex, like very capital intensive, right? You needed a ton of money to get a, a location started, a restaurant started. It was very risky. So as you know, most restaurants go broke within their first year of operation. And last, it's very hard to scale. So when you think about like the success cases, people who have actually got into like 10 locations, 20 locations, 50 locations, or kind of like even a McDonald's around the globe, they're very few and far apart, right? Um, so our first hurdle was to think about a business model, I would say that kind of like removed these main obstacles from the industry. And that's when we came up with the model we call today Foodology, in which we are basically creating fully virtual dining concepts, meaning the only way you can get them is through the different delivery apps, through um, our web pages, through WhatsApp, through Instagram, and running them out of ghost kitchens. Some people call them cloud kitchens, ghost kitchens, but basically it's a kitchen that only produces food for delivery. Um, And that was, I would say, the main hurdle because it was something that hadn't been done before. And we had a lot of doubts around, like, would people actually order from a brand that they've never seen a brick and mortar place, that they've never, like, passed through, passed by on the street. Um, And we wanted to prove out that people were actually ready, consumers were actually ready in this day and age to try things that they could only find online. Mm -hmm. Um, And we built our first four brands four years ago. Started off in Colombia, in Bogota, in the capital, with one kitchen, one one location, call that, and then four brands that we came up with. These four brands were highly inspired. We, we just had come back from living in Boston, and they were highly inspired from things that we loved in Boston but couldn't seem to find in Colombia. And very slowly but surely, these brands became top sellers within their categories, proving out that you could actually build a virtual dining brand and that people would actually love it, even though it didn't have a brick and mortar. All right, so tell me, what do you think sets you apart from your competition? So I think what sets us apart from our competition the most is our ability to quickly roll out concepts and to iterate on those, right? So when you think about a more traditional um, player, uh, these guys have a very hard time bringing in new things to their to their operation. So when you think about a restaurant that's always been selling pizza, starting selling sushi, it's kind of like out of the question. Or even for the bigger ones, like McDonald's, I think it took them like over two years to implement all day breakfast, just because of how um, I would say traditional the operation is and how slow it is to innovate. Here, we're constantly innovating. So we're both constantly creating new concepts and putting them out in the market to try and see if people like them, if it's something people need, if we're hitting the correct price points, the correct pictures, the correct menus. And then with brands that we already have in place, we can do very cool things, given that it's virtual, like try different pricings in different locations simultaneously, change the order of our menu. So we get to really understand what the customer wants based on like the data that we gather from that. And I think that's something that's 
very different from what the traditional industry has access to. All right. So Daniela, finally, looking ahead, tell me, what are your future plans for foodology? Looking ahead, I see a very bright future for foodology. I do think we are living in a, um, I would say, generational change in which food every time more is going to be more about convenience. So every time more, we're going to probably order more, pick up more, um, buy ready-to-eat kits or meals or something around that sort, because people are becoming way more, uh, I would say, balanced on how they use your time. And unless cooking is something you really enjoy, then it's something you would rather not do and spend your time doing something you really enjoy and like achieving that amazing like work-life balance in which the life part maybe does not include cooking for some people. And as more people turn towards convenience, we do think we're building the infrastructure to actually be able to supply the convenience for this like large segment of the Latin American consumers. We wanna make sure that we are their go-to place for the most innovative, newest, trendiest dishes and brands. And at the same time that we are at the capacity with the infrastructure to reach as many of them as possible. So for me, the future of foodology is going from like the 85 locations that we have today to probably going beyond 2000 locations across Latin America to serve those consumers and to be able to continuously bring like this amazing new things to them. All right. Well, Daniela, it's been wonderful to talk with you. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk today. Thanks, Judy, for the invitation. This has been wonderful.